Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. A biblical level plague has now hit Mecca. Before that, there were many warnings from other terrible disasters. The question being asked is, what's going on? Is this just natural phenomena or a sign of God's judgment, a divine message from Him? In this video, we will pull back the curtain and piece together these events to see what the message from our Creator is. The destruction of the Kaaba, the sacred edifice in Mecca, has been foretold in religious texts, and history has seen its ruin. In the Islamic civil war, the Kaaba was burned in 683 CE and in the second Islamic civil war, it suffered more damage when assaulted by forces against the ruler. The black stone of the Kaaba was even shattered, possibly by a projectile from a catapult. These events match the predictions made by Prophet Muhammad about the dismantling of the Kaaba, piece by piece. In recent times, unprecedented occurrences have unfolded in Mecca, prompting a meticulous examination. A woman had been crying and screaming in front of the Kaaba, causing many praying believers to become concerned. Not long ago, a recitation was heard inside the Kaaba. It has not stopped here. Intense storms and copious rainfall have unleashed chaos and disruption, impacting pilgrims and leading to the closure of educational institutions. These extraordinary incidents have transpired in close proximity to the monumental Black Cube, the epicenter of Muslim devotion. Furthermore, a video has surfaced depicting a lightning bolt striking the renowned Fairmont Mecca Clock Royal Tower Hotel, adding an air of mystique to these unfolding events. Mecca has additionally grappled with flash floods, resulting in substantial damage due to the relentless downpour. The neighboring city of Jeddah has not been spared, experiencing flooding that has compounded the challenges faced by communities in the region. In an unfortunate turn of events, a powerful earthquake has ravaged extensive areas near Saudi Arabia, leaving millions of individuals grappling to rebuild their shattered lives. Relocation, hunger, malnutrition, and limited access to healthcare have emerged as significant challenges for the affected populace, adding an eerie layer to the unfolding calamities. Mecca found itself besieged by an enormous swarm of locusts, prompting authorities to launch a comprehensive cleaning operation to eradicate these pests from Islam's most revered site. To compound matters, a colossal snake measuring over 10 meters in length, with a dark gray body and a head resembling a conical hat, made a sudden appearance during the Muslim pilgrimage. The serpent moved slowly and gracefully around the Kaaba, causing panic and terror among the pilgrims who scattered in disarray. This bewildering sequence of events has left many in a state of confusion and anxiety. While some attribute these incidents to natural phenomena, others interpret them as possible signs from a higher power, further intensifying the apprehension and contemplation among the affected population. The incident involving a woman hysterically crying and screaming in front of the Kaaba garnered attention when bystanders recorded and shared the scene on their social media accounts. Speculations initially arose attributing her behavior to the influence of jinn or some supernatural force. The cause behind her intense emotional display in distress has been a subject of debate. Some people suggested that she was unable to see the Kaaba despite everyone else being able to perceive it. The speculation continues that this inability to witness the Kaaba was considered a form of punishment. According to this perspective, as soon as she approached the Kaaba, she entered a peculiar state of mind and seemingly lost her sanity. The incident underscores the complex nature of beliefs, interpretations, and reactions within the context of religious and supernatural occurrences. Nevertheless, there might be occasions when we are oblivious to the breaches of trust, instances where our actions or thoughts go unnoticed as transgressions. During such times, it becomes imperative to examine our hearts and conduct, harmonizing them with the principles of trustworthiness. On August 22, Saudi Arabia experienced an intense weather phenomenon that was far from ordinary. The usually arid desert region was hit by severe lightning storms and powerful easterly winds, causing widespread damage across the nation. These videos showcase the formidable strength of the wind, which was so intense that it managed to displace heavy plastic barriers. 
The gusts also posed a significant threat to the movement of Umrah pilgrims within the Grand Mosque of Mecca. In one particularly dramatic video, a lightning bolt was seen striking the renowned Mecca Clock Royal Tower Hotel. Hailstorms are mentioned as one of the ten most severe plagues in the Exodus, used to chastise Pharaoh for enslaving the Jews. Despite seeing God's power, Pharaoh chose to rebel, ultimately facing the fury of God. Earthquakes and floods are also regarded as signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ, who will evaluate humanity for their sins and take the virtuous to everlasting life in heaven. Natural disasters, although often distressing, serve as reminders of the consequences of sin and the need for spiritual awakening. Ultimately, they compel us to consider our relationship with God and our eternal destiny. Observing what is happening in the Kaaba lately, including hailstorms, we all know that it is not merely a phenomenon but it has much more significance than that. Of course, I understand that we are all very afraid because we don't know whether these signs are good or bad signs. But you know, no matter which way it goes, it's the word of God. An unusual incident occurred at this revered site, a colossal snake emerged during the Muslim pilgrimage. Stretching over 10 meters, its dark gray body and a head resembling a conical hat, the serpent moved with deliberate grace around the Kaaba. Pilgrims, gripped by terror and fright, scattered in disarray, leaving many bewildered and concerned. Interpretations diverge, some view it as a natural occurrence, while others perceive it as a divine sign. Reflecting on history, Jesus has provided warnings about malevolence and moral decay within the Kaaba. The Quran sheds light on a serpent's role as Allah's protector in the past and foretells the emergence of a creature as Allah's messenger in the future. However, the narrative doesn't conclude there. It further reveals that Allah grants power to Satan, one of his ministers, to carry out his mission. The unfolding events raise profound questions about the significance and divine purpose behind this mysterious manifestation. The mission undertaken by Satan involves the deliberate misguidance of humanity, as explicitly mentioned in certain Quranic verses. In Surah 21, Satan openly articulates his plan to lead people astray, except for the sincere and pure servants of Allah. Notably, despite his malevolence, Satan acknowledges and respects those who devoutly worship Allah. This raises intriguing questions about the peculiar dynamic wherein Satan employs the name of Allah to carry out his deceptive acts against those who do not submit to Allah. Satan declares, by your power, I will surely deceive them all, suggesting a collaboration between Allah and Satan to fulfill Satan's nefarious intention of leading unbelievers astray. Examining historical perspectives, snakes have long been associated with representations of fertility and life vitality. Particularly during the shedding of their skin, they symbolize renewal, transformation, immortality, and healing, as exemplified by the Ouroboros depicting eternity and the continuous cycle of life. However, in various religious texts, snakes assume a different role, often representing evil and serving as symbols of punishment. While snakes can embody positive concepts such as immortality and rebirth, they simultaneously carry negative connotations, including deceit and retribution. The enigmatic appearance of the giant snake at the sacred site adds layers of complexity to its symbolism, inviting contemplation on its potential meanings within the context of religious teachings and history. The Bible unmistakably foretells the return of Jesus Christ to earth, referencing this event in multiple passages. At the Mount of Olives as Jesus ascended to heaven, angels assured his disciples of his eventual return. Responding to his disciples' inquiry, weeks earlier, Jesus provided detailed insights into the signs preceding his return and the end of the age. Jesus, identifying himself as the Son of Man, affirmed his return with the promise of coming in power and great glory. Zechariah 14 also prophesied that Jesus would return to the Mount of Olives. Jesus underscored the significance of his return, emphasizing the necessity of shortening those days to save humanity. Revelation echoes his affirmation with Jesus stating four times, I am coming quickly. Despite the assurance of his imminent return, God's perception of time differs from ours, and the fulfillment of certain events is yet to transpire. 
The abomination of desolation remains unfulfilled, and the onset of the great tribulation is pending. Strange sound. Are you acquainted with this sacred space? Undoubtedly, you are. How about circumambulation? We consider the act of circumambulating this sacred space to be a deeply emotional and spiritual encounter that fosters a connection with their faith and community. The pilgrimage is universally acknowledged as a profoundly spiritual and transformative experience for Christians worldwide. It symbolizes a journey of devotion, self-reflection, and communion with the divine. This sacred site is revered as a sanctified abode. However, according to a particular scripture, Jesus spoke the following about it, How great you are and how great your sanctity! By the one in whose hand is the soul of Jesus, the sanctity of the believer is greater before God than your sanctity. During circumambulation, there is no obligation to recite prayers from a book, as a mere repetition of words can impede a genuine experience of the ritual. Instead, open your heart to God, seek His forgiveness, and implore His mercy. Feel free to articulate your supplications in your language, using words and expressions that resonate with you the most. Request God to fulfill your desires. Always bear in mind that prayers during circumambulation present a golden opportunity not to be missed. In the natural world, all living cells move in a circular motion. This circular motion mirrors the Earth's rotation around the Sun, the Moon's orbit around the Earth, the solar system's rotation around the center of the galaxy, and the galactic circle rotation around the center of the universe, all of which God alone orchestrates. Circumambulation symbolizes a symbolic act of submission to God. It provides us with a means to express their love and devotion to the one God. Seek forgiveness for their sins and embark on a fresh start. Swarm Locusts In recent discussions across social media, much chatter has emerged about the presence of insects in the Islamic prayer space and near the revered burial site of the Holy Prophet Muhammad in Mecca. This occurrence following a heavy rainfall has stirred deep concern among Muslims worldwide. Reports vary, identifying the insects as either cockroaches, crickets, or locusts, while a prevailing belief leans towards them being locusts. Uncertainty lingers. Some perceive this insect invasion as a natural phenomenon, while others contemplate it as a potential sign from Jesus or even a form of divine retribution for Muslims. Interestingly, the Book of Revelation also delves into the theme of locusts, albeit in a symbolic and apocalyptic context. Described as being empowered like the scorpions of the earth, these locusts, as per John's account, were instructed not to harm the grass on the ground, which symbolically represents the destruction of greenery. It is crucial to note that the term earth in this context can refer to various scopes, ranging from a specific location like Israel to a broader understanding of the earth as a whole. This implies that the impact of the first trumpet is localized, affecting a place where all the grass is burned up. The metaphorical use of grass in the Bible can signify both literal vegetation and symbolize people. Further exploration of the book of Revelation reveals that the locusts are depicted with a leader and a specific objective. The text specifies that they were instructed not to harm any green trees or plants, representing life, health, and energy. Here, green trees symbolize those in positions of authority, while green grass represents the general populace. Other green elements may signify animals such as pets or farm animals. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that this interpretation remains speculative, and certainty regarding the exact nature of these events eludes us. In this broken world, we experience fear, hate, anger, lust, pride, arrogance, ego, and suffering. These negative aspects of life are an inherent part of our existence, regardless of whether we choose to adopt a positive outlook or not. We encounter unbelievers and individuals who constantly seek more than what they deserve or need. In these circumstances, we are called to press deeper into Jesus and His love, celebrating His name and worshipping in His presence. He holds the key to a well-lived life filled with contentment and peace. Allowing the Lord to purify our hearts is a personal choice. 
No one can experience true happiness or contentment without accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. By inviting Him into our hearts, He gives us a new heart capable of love and compassion towards others. This transformation compels us to perform good deeds and live not only for ourselves but for God and our fellow human beings. The return of the Lord is accompanied by specific events such as the revelation of the man of lawlessness and cosmic phenomena that will precede his coming. It is crucial for believers to remain vigilant, as the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, deceiving and clouding the minds of people. Therefore, we must not relax in our anticipation of Christ's return but rather stay rooted in faith and discernment as we eagerly await the second coming of Christ. Let us remember that purification of the heart is a personal choice. It requires accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and allowing Him to dwell within us. Through His presence, He transforms our hearts, instilling love, compassion, and a desire to do good deeds for others. A clean heart is a heart surrendered to God's will and a testament to His transformative power. In summary, the occurrence of natural disasters often reveals the hand of God working miraculously to prevent further loss of life. These events prompt individuals to re-evaluate their priorities and inspire acts of compassion and aid. Moreover, natural disasters can also serve as signs of God's imminent return, calling us to purify our hearts and align our lives with His Word. As we navigate the brokenness of this world, we must allow God's transformative power to work within us, enabling us to live for His glory and experience a well-lived life. When Jesus comes again, He will take His rightful place as the King of heaven and earth. His second coming will be a magnificent event, unlike His humble birth in a stable. He will establish His government on earth, and the church will become a part of His kingdom. Jesus will rule all the people of the earth in peace for a thousand years, a period known as the Millennium. During the Millennium, the righteous reign of Christ, the world will experience peace, harmony, and righteousness. It will be a time of divine governance where the influence of Satan will be restrained. The resurrected saints will participate in this glorious reign, and the earth will be transformed into a paradise. This period will be marked by the fulfillment of numerous prophecies, divine revelations, and the joyous reunion of loved ones. The completion of the first resurrection is an eagerly anticipated event among believers as it signifies the fulfillment of God's promises of eternal life and the establishment of Christ's reign on earth. As we await this glorious moment, it is essential to cultivate mindfulness and prepare ourselves for the Lord's return. Through meditation and mindfulness, we can increase our spiritual awareness, stay present in the moment, and align ourselves with God's will. May we embrace the hope and anticipation of Christ's return, seeking to live faithfully and joyfully in preparation for the completion of the first resurrection.